most critical mistake to avoid in a job interview. Hi everyone, Martin Gladak here from the Busy Educator website with our second video. How, how was the first video? Did you, did you start thinking about those, those little details like making sure names are spelled correctly? I, I want you to start thinking about those small details that you might not think are important to an employer but may be crucial if you want a teaching job. Did you let me know your experience looking for a teaching job? Were there any little details that hurt your chances for an interview or for a job? I'd love to read your comments. In this video, I'm gonna give you five job interview tips to help you avoid the most critical mistake I made in my first interviews. I learned this critical mistake the hard way by doing the mistake a number of times and not getting the job. Before I became a teacher, I tried getting a full-time job after I graduated with a four-year Bachelor of Arts degree in the late 1970s. I, I was really excited to be applying for my first full-time job. I was finally going to be in the workforce. I was no longer going to be a student. I was, I was finally going to be making some money. I sat down my typewriter. There, there were no word processors back then, and I started to type personalized cover letters and resumes to 100 employers. I figured that out of 100 employers, there, there had to be a job for me. I made sure I had the right paper. You know, that, that fancy 32 pound, 100% cotton, bright white paper. I made sure I had the right name in the employer's hiring committee. I made sure I had the right manila envelopes and the right postage. This was before fax machines and email. It took about a week to type up all the cover letters and resumes. The reason why it took me so long was that if you, if you made a mistake back then, you really couldn't use whiteout to correct the mistake. You just you just start all over again. I, I I was excited. I was pumped. I was ready for the replies. The days went by. Then the weeks went by. I checked my mailbox every few hours to see if anything came in. Finally, the replies started to come in. My my, my heart would would race a bit. I opened the letters and I read the rejections. That, that was fine. Rejection was part of the whole process. Out of the 100 jobs I applied for, I did get eight interviews, which back then, like now, the economy wasn't doing so well and not many employers were hiring graduates with a Bachelor of Arts degree. But I still got eight interviews. Out of the eight interviews, I got exactly zero job offers. That was pretty depressing. I really had my heart set on some of those jobs. Looking back, the most critical mistake I made in not getting a single job offer was that I, I didn't show up. That is not to say that I didn't show up for the interview. I was there physically, but I wasn't present in the moment. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. I wasn't geared up. Thinking back to all those newbie mistakes I made, here are five job interview tips to help you avoid the most critical mistake I made in my first interviews. Number one, get a good night's rest. Set your alarm or multiple alarms and get up early, have a good breakfast and get mentally prepared for your interview. Always dress properly for an interview. Your first impression could be your last one. When in doubt, it is better to overdress than underdress. This was one of the biggest mistakes I made in my first interview. I got up late down a cup of coffee and looked like something that a cat dragged in. Not a good first impression. It didn't start well. Went downhill quickly after that and didn't end well. Number two, never be late for a job interview. Give yourself enough time to get there. You should, you should get to your interview 10 to 15 minutes early. This would give you some time to relax and gather your thoughts before the interview actually starts. Another common mistake I made in my early interviews. I came late because I misjudged the traffic or I couldn't find the, the right office tower, or I was so nervous I spilled coffee over my shirt and need the extra time to clean up. So, factor in enough time to get there. While you're there, get to know the secretary. Here's an inside tip. Ask for permission if you can just walk the hallway and look at the displays. Take 10 minutes before your interview to do this. This little tidbit of information will really impress your interviewer when you talk about it. It's it, 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 it not only shows that you've taken an interest in what teachers and students are doing at the school, but it also will show the interviewer your thoughts about the work. It also puts you head and shoulders above your competition. Number three, do your research. 
before the interview, try to find out as much as you can about the district, school, administration, and staff. How else do you expect to answer the question, why do you want to work for our school, or why do you think you'd be a good fit with our district and our school? If you don't know anything about the district, school, administration, and staff, there's a good chance that you're not going to get hired. This is what sunk any chances I had for the non-teacher jobs I was applying for. The interview asked me, what do you see yourself doing for our company? I went blank. I mumbled something about I, about, uh, I wanted to work for this company, but I, I couldn't come up with anything specifically that I wanted to do for the company. My mind went blank. The interview was soon over and I was shown the door. With the internet, very easy to go to districts and schools website and read about who they are, their mission, vision, demographics, special programs, what they're most proud of and, and known for. Most often you read about administration staff through their web pages, blogs, Twitter feeds and other social media. The big takeaway here is that you want to show your prospective employer that you really want to work for them by taking the time to research them and getting to know the district school and staff. Number four, show your passion for the job. Remember, passion is not something that can be taught. You either have it or you don't. Your employer wants to know that you have it. This was the biggest reason why I wasn't prepared. I, this, this, this is why I didn't show up. I, I really had no passion for the jobs. I was applying for. Once I got my teaching degree and I found that I had a passion for teaching for kids, I, I was enthusiastic and this passion came across my teacher job interviews. It certainly didn't come across in the other non-teacher jobs I applied for. Number five, interviewers want to know that you're not just looking for any job but that you're looking for the right job for you. Therefore, you should be prepared with a handful of questions that you like to ask of them. This will also make the interview seem more like a two-way conversation rather than a one-way interview. For my very first interview, I had zero questions. I really didn't know what I wanted. I just wanted a job. Not good. When I applied for my teaching job, I knew exactly the subject and grade I wanted to teach. I also knew about the specific curriculum, the strands and resources I would be teaching. I, I knew what I was going to be teaching and, and I, could, I could articulate what I, what I knew to the hiring committee. And, and since I was prepared, I could ask the hiring committee about specific challenges that I knew would come up, come up at the grade level and the subject I was teaching. It then became a two-way conversation and a discussion. It was also an opportunity to recap to them what may be different and better than all the other candidates, what I could offer the school and, and why I should be hired. I spoke about my strengths, the committees and extracurricular activities that I want to be a part of and uh, some of my other strengths that would be an asset to the school. Job interviews can be extremely stressful, especially when there's a job you really want. However, if you follow these job interview tips and watch my next video, you'll be better prepared to ace your next job interview. Now, I want to talk about the next video I have for you. You're going to love this last video. It, 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 it's absolutely the best video of all of them. I give away the secret to how to answer the most important teacher interview question as well. You'll also be able to download a special report on 110 teacher interview questions, which practically covers every question you're going to be asked in a teacher interview. In the meantime, scroll down the comment box. Let me know what your dream teaching job is that you're looking for. Write down what grade or subject do you think you'll be teaching five or ten years from now. List, list any, any interview questions that, that I should have included. And again, post any questions or other comments for me. After you've posted, go ahead and, and, and hit that like button. I'm Marion Glavak from the Busy Educator website. Talk to each other, support each other, and take care of each other.